2022 has been a pretty good year for gaming so far, at least for me it was. I've enjoyed Elden Ring, although it beat my butt over and over again, and then I relaxed tons in Rune Factory 5. With Pokemon Legend Arceus, Game Freak brought me one of my most favorite Pokemon games of all time, even if it has some small problems. And I even enjoyed Strangers of Paradise. Chaos. There are other games that came out that I haven't played yet though, like Atelier Sophie 2 or Kirby and the Forgotten Land, but I absolutely still want to play these games soon. It's going to be tough though, because the second half of the year is filled with awesome games that I'm extremely excited about. To share the hype, I decided to make this video. I am Gaming Quitter, the most delicious quitter of them all, and these are the games in the second half of 2022 that I'm most excited about. And yes, I have noticed this is a stupid time to post this because sooner we'll have different presentations which will show us new stuff, but let's just ignore it for now. With Fire Emblem Warriors, Three Hopes, a new Warriors games with Nintendo IP will release at the end of June. I love me some Warriors games and have played quite a lot of them. I quite enjoyed the first Fire Emblem Warriors, which might or might not be mostly because of a playable Lin, but it couldn't hook me as much as other Warriors games did. I sure hope that Three Hopes will provide a bit more diversity in how the characters play. From what I have seen so far, it looks like we will actually be able to play all of the students, which surely will end up in a lot of units playing very similar to each other. But I'm excited to see this possible new route for the story, even if I have only played Eelgard's route in Three Houses. I'm a bit sad that we will probably only have characters from Three Houses, but I guess it makes sense. I do love me some crossover warrior games like the first Fire Emblem Warriors was or the absolute fantastic first Hyrule Warriors. I still love that game so much. In July, things will get rough. I am excited about the Klonoa collection, but the main titles in that month are Live Alive and Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Live Alive is a classic I've always wanted to play since I saw a video about it from the I think Did You Know Gaming channel. And well, Xenoblade is just an amazing series so far. I recently played Future Connected because for some reason I hadn't done that yet, and now I am extremely in the mood for another Xenoblade game. It's going to bring together the worlds of both Xenoblade Chronicles games, so I am extremely excited to see what the story is going to look like. On that note, by the way, um, Nintendo if you're listening, please just pour your Xenoblade Chronicles X to the Switch, I do not want to get out my Wii U to finally play it for real. I feel like it was yesterday, I remember the day so well, the day I bought JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle for PS3. I hadn't heard of the JoJo series yet, and the game was just like 5 bucks. I played it with a friend and we had literally no idea what was going on, it was so confusing. But now that I'm fully in love with the franchise, I couldn't be more excited about the port of the game to modern consoles. The original game also doesn't let me download the DLC anymore, so I was never able to fully experience the game, or play as Iggy for that matter. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle R will release around September and I'm so excited to finally beat up Dio again. I don't know if I've ever talked about it on the channel, but I love Digimon. I've played tons of Digimon World back on the original PlayStation, Metal Greymon and Metal Mamemon. even if the German version had a bug that didn't let you access a huge part of the game. I spent dozens of hours in Digimon World Next Order, and I even played through the Japanese version of Digimon Cyber Sleuth on PS Vita with the help of Google Translate. So naturally I'm looking forward to Digimon Survive, which finally has a release date in July. Apparently it's going to have a lot of novel elements, which means I will have to read more about Digimon than actually sending them into fights, but I'm okay with that if the story is exciting. Let's just hope that even after all the delays, the game will be good. A delayed game will eventually be good or something like that, right Mr. Miyamoto? Since I love shooting weird fluids around, I am of course super excited to finally play Splatoon 3 in September. For some reason, I never really played much of Splatoon 2, but I can't wait to get into the fray again in the third installment of this series. Usually I just play the single player campaign, because I think those are some of the best jump run levels I've ever played, but I might get back into online gaming with this one. At least if I can learn how to play again. I also kinda hope we will get more lore about the messed up world of Splatoon. I already mentioned it, but I really liked Pokemon Legends Arceus and the kinda open world-ish approach it gave us. So naturally, I am super excited for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I think the games look really fun, and being able to run around with your friends in an open world seems like the dream Pokemon game we've all been waiting for. I just hope 
that the duck Pokemon won't have an ugly evolution. Although I'm sure it's just going to look like Donald Duck in the end, which I would be fine with as long as it heals me when I'm low on HP. In theory, Bayonetta 3 should release this year, but we don't know that for sure yet. I really hope it will though, because I need me some badass action really soon. And it doesn't get more badass than with Bayonetta. I mean, I will probably soon replay Devil May Cry 5, which is just one of the best action games ever made in my opinion, but it's no Bayonetta. I must have played the first two games at least a dozen of times each, even trying to speedrun the second one at some point just for fun. I also love the fan theories about us not playing the Bayonetta in the third game, because the trailer hints at us actually playing someone else, but we'll only know for sure when the game drops or when we get a new trailer. You know what's fun? Sacrifices. Exactly. At least in theory and totally not in real life, I would never do that. At least not until I have to. So let's keep these things in the virtual world only and that's why I can't wait for Cult of the Lamb. In this cute looking game, you play a possessed lamb that builds up its own cult where you have to not only fight monsters, but also cultivate your cult by growing crops and stuff. I love the aesthetics of this game so much and I hope it will be as fun as it looks. So I've noticed this list is pretty Nintendo heavy, so let's quickly talk about God of War Ragnarok. I love the original game even if I disliked some aspects of the level design. Like, why can Kratos not jump and only throw his son up some higher platforms, but not others? Stuff like that really annoys me because it's just bad level design in my opinion if he could, in theory, get somewhere without having to track around the entire island because he can do so in other places. Anyway, God of War Ragnarok looks to continue the fun of its predecessor and I'm excited to see what adventures await Kratos and his little boy, who is now a little bigger boy. Also, I'm pretty sure, this is just a theory of mine, uh, that Kratos is going to die in this game so that Atreus can continue his legacy. Mark my words. The last game I want to talk about is Star Ocean The Divine Force. I know the Star Ocean franchise doesn't have the best track record, but when I saw the trailer for the new one, I almost died because of hype. It looks so good. It's going to be really difficult to be a better game than The Last Hope, although story-wise it might not be that difficult, but the gameplay really needs to be good to live up to the older games. And no, we do not talk about whatever Square Enix released on PS4. Let's just pretend this didn't happen, although we we'll all know the only good thing about this game is her. There's more games that I'm looking forward to, like Sonic Frontiers or the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge game, but I don't want to make this video super long. I'm also sure that I missed something and like I said, we will get more announcement in the near future about cool stuff that I probably want to buy, but do not have the time to play anyway. I mean, who plays games nowadays? It's way more fun to just put them on the shelf and let them rot there, right? Anyway, tell me in the comments below which games you are most excited about in the upcoming future and also please tell me if you like these styles of video from me. I'm trying out new things here because, well, I kinda have to since the game I did videos about in the past is basically dead now. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more gaming content from yours truly in the future. I've also started posting TikToks from time to time, so if you wanna see those, follow me on TikTok. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.